see if I can darken it down a little bit. Or equally as I go over the, the whole panel, uh, they may just darken down again as well themselves. If I can finish this panel before I have to uh, turn the heat down on this pin or change pins. of the side so say it's intended to be a grill over the air intakes or the exhaust I don't know what it is just a holes in the side Colouring quite nicely now, does this particular piece? It's got a fairly even colour, which is one of the reasons why I bought this particular spoon shader. Is in theory ought to, if I'm able to manipulate it correctly, be able to give me a fairly even colour above over the area that I'm using it in. 
Now the other type of shader that I've got, which is called a spoon shader, because of the the bowl shape, spoon shaped bowl it has, uh, can be a little bit more tricky because you're working with what is effectively like a little bump or point underneath and whilst it does make some shading activities easier um, because you've only got that uh, small contact area it also does make put grooves into the work as you're going along and you can feel that as you make the next try and make the next row of your shading and if you're not careful you tend to fall back into the same groove and it gets uh, darker than you intended and it can sometimes be difficult because of that to get a smooth shade this being flat in theory ought to avoid that sort of difficulty but in practice it's you're almost always using just slightly the edge of it almost you've got to be a bit careful not to do almost exactly the same thing and that is use, a, use the edge of the tool too much and that causes you to get just a point or you know, another like with the spoon shader you get the bump on the bottom get a similar sort of thing a point from using the edge of the tool it's quite hard actually to keep it flat Partly, of course, because if you do use the edge, you actually get colour, and the tendency is to uh, to try and use that edge to get the colour that you want. Then you have to shade it in to smooth it out uh, and join it up with the rest of the uh, colouring that you're doing. That's not done too bad. I'll try and make it a bit darker. It's almost an extremely dark red in the reference picture that I'm using, uh, with the areas of the behind the grill black. But it's it's not a not far actually off being black itself. Just because what it really is is a fine mesh, and when you paint a fine mesh colour that you paint it, especially with a darkish colour like red, doesn't really show up. If you want to say hello in chat, please uh, please do so. Say hello if you have any questions. Feel free to ask them. I will try and answer them if I can. smooth out what I've been doing. The, uh, what you're actually doing with pyrography in this style is in heating the wood what you're doing is causing the sap that's in the wood to be extruded or, or, or leaked out um, and then it actually gets cooked by the heat of the tool 
which is what uh, changes the colour and then it sits on the surface providing that that colour almost like a varnish actually and uh, sometimes you can actually move that around uh, with a little bit of heat because it's it's liquid when it's uh, when it's warm and so by just heating it up and performing a swirling action here you can sort of ease out any particularly dark patches sometimes and just uh, smooth out the uh, the graduations of the shading uh, and remove dark spots now if you get too hot though you do actually carbonize the wood and then that's uh, that's about as far as you can go with that okay we'll leave that as it stands at the moment This next panel across here is actually yellow in real life. So what I want to do here is try and get a a pale colour uh, across. Across it, smooth, uh, smooth pale colour. It's corrugated, but I'm going to do the corrugations afterwards because, again, on the reference picture I've got here, the locomotive identification number is also painted onto the side just across here. I want to try and get that in as well if I can. and get a fairly smooth pale colour which basically means I need to keep this tool moving fairly quickly and only build up the colour slowly some colour here, I don't know if it's showing up on yeah you can see some of the colour uh, on your screen well actually it's picking it up a little bit better than I am seeing in uh, in real life here building up but it's slow do 
Cool temperature is quite high for what I normally work at, so I don't want to turn it up anymore. So I'll just slow down the tip a little bit. Although this is yellow and the, the roof is, is red, what I don't want to do is get exactly the same shade as I've got up there. Not that it matters too much, one of the uh, things that you're doing here is, is basically making a monochrome picture. Yeah, and there are you know, plenty of situations where a yellow colour will look the same as a pale red uh, in, in monochrome. That's coming along, staying a nice smooth colour shade as well, which is great. Okay, um, what I might do is just continue this colour all the way down. Oh, sugar. One of the things you forget sometimes with the pen is that when you take it off the wood, it actually heats up because the pen conducts, uh, sorry, the wood conducts heat away. And if you put it down um, on the wood without cooling it off first, which you generally do by blowing on it, you get what I've got there, which is a blob of brown, uh, which is not something I really wanted, but. I've got, there's not a lot I can really do about it because I, I can erase it, um, but erasing involves actually scratching away at the surface or sanding it or something like that. And uh, that on this particular wood, that would stand out as a rough surface and just wouldn't look right anyway. So um, what I'm going to do is just ignore it for the moment. It is possible that I may get away with it because one of the things about this particular panel here is that it's corrugated and also um, there is an identification number painted on the side and that may well be enough to hide that brown if I'm lucky. If I'm not, too bad, it's a practice piece. But it's uh, just one of those things that happens and you've got to be aware of. Otherwise, when it's not a practice piece, you can get that effect happening when you didn't want it to do so. If anyone has any questions, feel free to uh, drop them into the channel and see if I can, uh, can do so. Say hello as well. Some more darkened spots over at this side here as well. 
Now then again those I'm not fantastically worried about because I know that particular area I'm going to make darker and therefore they won't show up. I'm trying to match the colour that I had in this left hand panel. working on here is hardboard which is not a great um, piece of wood for this it's made out of um, more or less sawdust which has been glued back together there isn't a lot of sap in sawdust and uh, when it's been through the gluing and pressing process that produces hardboard it's, uh, it's doesn't have a lot uh, a lot of that sap left and it's the sap which actually is heated up to perform form the colour so it's quite difficult to actually get this to uh, to colour not actually burning the wood I am actually cooking the sap I could heat it up enough to burn the wood but then the effect is you just get a black and white image uh, and you get very dirty fingers. And I'm not really after a black and white image. What I'm trying to do is learn enough technique and practice enough to actually be able to get uh, a lot of shades of, uh, of brown even out of difficult wood like this if I can do it on difficult wood I can do it on easy wood like um, uh, birch Uh, or basswood perhaps, um, which is which is quite white or quite lightly coloured. things uh, of working of doing pyrography like this is um, I'm holding a miniature fire in my hand and it makes it actually quite warm uh, and the air around me is quite warm it's nice nicer to do this actually in a cool room but it's a bit windy to open the windows here
Yeah, this is just a practice piece. Uh, I'm using a new tip on this particular pen here um, that I've got just recently. Uh, and I'm trying to learn the capabilities of it, what I can do with it, what I can't, and just how to use it. I'm doing this on uh, on practice wood, on, on hardboard, uh, mainly because I've got a lot of it cut to this particular size which is A4 which is a convenient size it's not a great wood to well it, it's it's not a great wood to practice on because it doesn't uh, colour very easily but equally that actually conversely is also a good thing to practice on because if I can get lots of shade of colour out of this which is quite a difficult wood then when I move to something like uh, a birch sheet which is a white wood then I should have a lot more chance of getting a lot of shades out of that um, but actually you also have to learn not just the tools um, but the wood because woods all react differently and when it might be for example very difficult to make this go dark if I'm doing it with something like birch then that may go dark a lot easier so you kind of have to have experience of both it's not uh, a learn it one it's actually a learn it in one place and it works everywhere the, the techniques sort of do but the actual you know like if i hold this in one place here for five seconds um, it'll maybe go sort of a fairly dark brown if i do that on birch i'll probably carbonize the wood um, but that's uh, yeah, so you, you haven't got absolutes, but yeah, you do learn. Still the same techniques. Okay, I'm trying to make this look effectively like a yellow. Um, that's the colour it's representing. And it just won't quite go. I want it a little bit shade darker. I've currently got here. And this bottom car this bottom quadrant here is a bit lighter than I want it to be. But I'm gonna be careful not to get burns like I just have done there. I think we'll accept that as being okay. Now then what I've got to do, want to do here is just give myself an indication of a marking on the side of the locomotive. Doing here is just putting dotted lines in basically um, to help me see where it is, but they're light enough. that they will actually shade in. Okay, now there's a couple of areas can go darker. Which I mean darker, not burnt. Okay, I'm just going along that edge there where I put the dotted lines in so they will then hide in the darker area and you won't see them afterwards. What doing now is using the technique of just moving the tip slowly in order to get it to, uh, to darken by holding the heat in one place for longer. You actually get different colours as well doing the different techniques like that. Moving it slowly will give one set of colour. If I turn the heat up I get a different quality of colour. Um, the quicker you um, cook the sap uh, you 
you get a different different effect. The cooler methods tend to glaze it, make it go like a varnish smooth. And you can actually see that uh, in the work afterwards. The faster ones tend to make it look matte. So if I turn the heat up, it would tend to make it look matte rather than smooth and shiny. Which can work quite nicely to give you different textures on some pieces if that's what you're after. Now I'll just try and avoid this panel because this is a panel to the right of what I'm doing here is another one of these grills and I want to do that separately now this particular section isn't going very smoothly I'm getting Ridge marks. Not sure, if, not sure how they'll show up in the uh, in the broadcast, but there's like dark streaks, which I didn't particularly want to have there. It's probably actually me having the tool a little bit hot from when I was doing it. Uh, the other areas. to stop it getting a blob not succeeding too well okay sorry if you were blowing in your ear there and just blowing the tip to cool it down before I put it on the wood that way it doesn't go dark and you'll get a dark spot I want this to be a bit darker, it doesn't look quite correct at the moment Continue this up here as well. It's interesting, there's a lot of similar techniques to other painting styles as well that are used in pyrography. Using one here which is similar to spray painting. Um, I'm using automotive painting and uh, sometimes in airbrushing which is wet edge. Whilst I'm not actually using liquid what I am doing is is just extending the edge I've been working on. Um, what I'm doing is heating the wood and of course the heat is dissipating away from the tip but if I work in the same area as I just uh, was just slightly moving it away slightly uh, what would be the wet edge in uh, in spraying 
um, I've got the hot wood, the wood that's already hot in that area and therefore I don't actually have to add a lot more heat to get the uh, to get the sap to cook Darkened off quite a lot, quite nicely there. Just carry it through into this panel here. Okay. Now then, what would normally go there would be the locomotive number. I'm not sure whether I actually want to try and do that. Let's see if I can do that with a pencil. Turn the heat off for the moment, so I don't burn myself. And take a little drink. Okay. Um, let me see if I've got a pencil. But to be a little bit careful with pencils because uh, pencil is graphite and graphite uh, does actually burn uh, and it will it will go quite dark if I'm not careful when I uh, put the heat tool over it that's not really what not necessarily what I intend every time so you do have to be a little bit careful using pencils what I'm trying to do here is get in a five digit number in perspective And then I'll have to go over it with a heat tool. Mainly want to try and get the spacing in reasonably well okay looks like I've just about done it Close enough for what I'm after here. You may not be able to see that, but it's uh, 